Imagine this is the year 1870 when glorious stories of the royals interweave with stories of gang feuds that happen in every corner of the street, particularly among different fractions of immigrants. The immigrants, they flocked this town because they were attracted to one of the most precious elements ever unearthed, the tin. I'll cut it short. Then came the British and took control of the town and under its rule, this town became one of the most profitable territories of the empire in Malaya. Fast forward to 2018, the heyday of tin mining era is long gone, but this town continues to prosper in its own pace. Today, this town is perfect for those who want peace and quiet. But hey, don't be fooled when I say peace and quiet because you will be surprised with what this town has to offer. So get ready for spectacular natural landscapes, historical landmarks, diverse cultures, exciting adventures, and lip-smacking local delicacies. From the land of eternal peace, I'm Hamza Hamid, and I welcome you to Taiping. Situated on a plain to the west of Bintang Range, Taiping is blessed with geographical wonders. From valleys to mountains to limestone cliffs, the combo forms a landscape that offers not only a fascinating scenery, but also a playground for the fans of extreme sports enthusiasts. I travelled 15 kilometres from Taiping town to Batu Kurau to blend in with a group of experienced climbers. Ia bermula tak tak lama sangat sebenarnya baru tahun lepas 2016 yang mana tim daripada Gua Damai. Kalau kita tahu lah di Batu Cave sana, okay, group yang biasa climbing di sana, rock climbing di sana. So, dia, dia bantu kita untuk develop kawasan ni. Oh my, it's harder than it looks. I'm heavier than I thought. Spectators and gravity are definitely laughing at me. So there I was, stuck in the middle of the climb, relying on anything, everything that I could grab and hold on to, awkward edges, crack in between rocks, or even tree roots, which I'm not supposed to. Then I tried abseiling down a cliff. I felt much more comfortable doing it. Yeah, it was much easier roping down. Height is definitely not a factor this time around. Gravity becomes my friend. All I needed to do was sliding down safely and accordingly. By the time I reached the ground, I knew I deserved to lie down for a while. <sighs> the best thing was, I made new friends. I'm panting for air. Okay, 
We're just done with our rock climbing in Gunung Kurau, Batu Kurau, and I've met these two tourists. Can you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Ashraf, and I'm a tourist here. You're He's from? From Bangladesh. From Bangladesh. Yeah. And on my left is? I'm Abu Zarabaz, and I'm from Pakistan, and I'm a tourist too here. It was awesome, really. It's a nice experience. I have a six-month experience in climbing wall, but then this is like a rock climbing. This is to a whole other level. You got to come here and see it by yourself. But how it is. these two guys managed to reach to the top. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> how was it, Abu Zar? Actually, it was an amazing, amazing experience, and that was my first time. And as a first time, it's a bit difficult, but if you try with a full of motivation, I think you can do it. It's, it's not impossible. You can do it. It's a fun. This spot is definitely for those with strength, stamina, and strategy, which I'm lacking of. <laughs> <laughs> but still, you did a well job. <laughs> and later, we are going to explore a cave. And the locals call it the Cave of yeah. the Bats. Oh my wow. god. Let's Can't go. to see it. All right. <laughs> interesting, right? And a scary too. Let's see. In the pitch black area of the cave, no plants can grow. But that doesn't mean the ecosystem cannot thrive. Thanks to the bats, they produce the droppings. Bat droppings or guano becomes a haven for fungus and bacteria, which provide sufficient nutrients for tiny insects, which then attracts bigger insects. And then comes the arthropods like centipedes and millipedes, then spiders, which later attracts rodents, then come reptiles like lizards and snakes, and so on. This is what we call cave food chain. Now that's Cave Ecosystem 101. So whenever you do caving adventure, always remind yourself that you are not alone. The cave is full of living things. The cave itself is alive. Next stop, Kalunod Honey Farm in Kampung Air Itam, July. Not only it produces quality honey for medicinal purpose, the farm itself draws attention as a tourism product. Curiosity heightened as soon as we entered the compound. They, they, they like any, any kind of flowers or they have some significance. They will go for most uh, type of flowers. It's only that uh, the difference between them and normal bees is uh, these guys, they can actually go to little flowers that are extremely small. Whereas oh. the bees, which are bigger, they cannot uh, take the nectar from the smaller flowers. It's runny, it's not as... Yes, it's, it's very runny. Yeah, it's, it's runny. runny. It's as not as compared thick to normal honey. or sticky oh. like the normal honey. We were brought closer to one of the nests in a shaded area. As the beekeeper removes the lid, it revealed an intricate hive of hexagonal cells or pots. The pots are interconnected just like futuristic homes we have seen in sci-fi movies. And every pot contains glistening purplish liquid that we were about to taste. We were told that the taste of the honey may vary depending on the type of flowers the bees collected the nectar from. And guess what? The one we tasted has blackcurrant flavour. Yeah, although blackcurrant is nowhere found in Batu Kurau, this unique flavour is actually from a combination of nectars from various unidentified local flowers. 
that's the beauty of Kalulut honey. Different mix, different taste. In this farm in Kampung Ayi Itam, Jelai, Batu Kurau, there are more than 200 nests like this. They are homes to 15 different species of lebah kelulut or stingless bees. And in every single one of them, this health elixir is in the making. I heard rumours that the best prawn noodle in Kuala Sepetang is Mi Banjir Udang Mak Teh in Kampung Tebuk Matang. Established more than 25 years ago, the family business survives despite competition. An epitome of originality, this is the place for those who are craving for a true local flavour. Basically, uh, this prawn noodle is made of yeah, the yellow noodle here, and the broth is made from uh, dried chili powder, okay. and then you have um, dried shrimps, okay. and then chili sauce, yes, and shredded cabbage and chives as the garnishing. And of course, you have this beautiful sea prawns over here. Look at that. So, while it's hot, I mean, try the broth first. It was worth a visit. I think the highlight of Mate's prawn noodle is in the simplicity of its broth. It's light yet savoury and the flavour is enhanced by the fresh succulent sea prawns. If you want to immerse yourself in the local history, I would suggest you to visit Matang Museum, which is approximately 30 minutes' drive from Taiping Town. The building was built by Ngah Ibrahim, who was the son of Long Jafa, the first Malay who opened tin mines in Larut, Matang and Selama areas in 1840. Matang Museum has seen a series of transformations. This building has functioned as a home, a fortress, an academic institution, an administrative center, and a Japanese army's headquarters within a period of more than a hundred years. Today, it opens its door for visitors to enjoy artifacts exhibition, demonstrating chronological events leading to the establishment of the museum itself. The museum summarizes the origin of Taiping and the incidents and wars that happened during the 1800s, including the time of Japanese occupation and British colonization.
Although Long Ja'fa and his son Nga Ibrahim are long gone, their names will remain immortalized in the annals of the nation's history as two prominent Malays who developed the tin industry. Matang Mangrove Eco Educational Center was established in 1992 and is managed by Perak State Forestry Department with the aim to provide recreation facilities, ecotourism opportunity and improve public awareness. Not only it has become a popular destination for ecotourism, it is also a center for research and education. Di sini uh, hutan bakau merupakan terbesar di Semenanjung Malaysia dan pengurusan hutan bakau uh, dia mendapat anugerah pengurusan hutan bakau terbaik dunia sebab pengurusan di dunia ni uh, di sini saja yang buat sistem terbangan dan pengurusan yang secara sistematik. Okey satu tarikan di kawasan hutan ni adalah uh, River Cruise uh, dia ada berbagai pakej uh, di sini. Biasanya pelancong memberi pakej uh, mengikut masa yang diperlukan. Uh, biasanya di sini uh, River Cruise boleh melihat uh, perkampungan nelayan, aktiviti nelayan, burung-burung uh, uh, yang berada di sini dan juga uh, hutan bakau yang luas di sini. Visitors are able to enjoy boat ride to nearby attractions and activities such as Monkey and Bird Sanctuary, Eagle Watching, cruise along floating villages, A stop at a fisherman's jetty or visit a fish farm. This is another interesting pit stop. This is Kuala's Petang uh, Puffer Fish Farm where you can get a closer look at the various kind of fish including the puffer, the archer fish and the tilapia and also the catfish. But one thing I need to show Abuza and Ashra, a creature from the prehistoric era. Let's find it. I'm enjoying every second of this river cruise. It's drizzling, but somehow 
I'm hoping to catch a glimpse of the perfect sunset moment. Somehow right here, right now, I could feel this organic sense of tranquility just by looking at the river. I know some of you might say, what's so nice about the river, it's murky. But no, you have to be here to experience its magic. The river is pickle green in colour with a tinge of copper brown and it sets a perfect hue with all the vibrant green elements on each side of the river. Plus the gloomy 6.30pm Kuala Spetang sky, it completes the whole scenery. God is the greatest artist. Talk about God and his creation, Abuza has his own way of expressing his appreciation to the nature. And finally, we stop at Kuala Sangha Fisherman's Village. At this hour, it's a best spot to enjoy the magnificent display of colors at the horizon. Every sunset is an opportunity to reset. Till we meet again in the next episode, I'm Hamza Hamid, loving typing even more. So many pictures of the things we think we need. So many photo shoots, a model wanna be. So many movies of a made up make believe. So many messages. In Hums Travels Discover Typing next week, a visit to Kuala Spetang Charcoal Factory, jungle trekking to Fantasy Pool, and go deep into the philosophy of Bertam weaving. Take away the superficial.